talking about my book, Whipping Debt's Ass. Yes. So I am going through the chapters in the book. And the next chapter is Humble Beginnings. And I kind of really explained the Humble Beginnings in the introduction. And just to give a little bit more details with my book, Whipping Debt's Ass, that it wasn't easy. Y'all know this, right? It's not easy to be broke. We didn't have money once a time ago. When Tony and I got together, we we struggled. We worked, but we struggled. Then when the businesses started to pop off, you know, and, and God started to really just show me through the dream and I did everything that I, it was just step by step by step. One door closed, another door opened. It really did make me humble. And even with writing this book, my humble beginnings really started from not having as much to when I had it to be grateful. But when you splurge, what is your gratitude? And that's what I was saying to myself. How am I being grateful because I'm splurging? And so, like I said before in the other video, that I'm going to get this shit up. Because if I'm not grateful and I'm splurging and I don't have the money that I should have at the end, I need to give it up. Because I'm just not a good steward. And if I'm not a good steward, I'm just going to go out there and just work. Because I'm going to let you know, it's hard to have your own. It's hard to be an entrepreneur. It's hard. It's difficult. Because you work, you don't have no set hours. It's when that stuff start coming in this head and that start triggering in his brain, that's when you start creating and doing and building and that's what happens. And I remember not sleeping and two o'clock in the morning crying. And I'm like, what is going on? And that's where the blessings and a second touch of joy was built out of these tears. Because I'm like, why am I doing this? But I'm doing it because joy is an after school program and it's helping children in the community in New Jersey. A Second Touch is a case management agency and it's helping families to do the Division of Developmental Disability, but those are disabled. Being an executive and an owner of a nonprofit and a for-profit, they're two different things and it's not easy. It is hard. But I couldn't do that and be fake, right? And be broke. I couldn't do that. I, I wrote this this chapter, Humble Beginnings, because I want you all to understand where I came from and where I'm at. And that you too can do the same thing, but you have to be a good steward with what you have. And I was not a good steward. Now, I, when I was in church, if that's what you want to call a good steward, I was paying my tithes. But I personally don't believe in tithes anyway. And that's a whole different story, not to be biblical, but... I was a good steward in that, but I wasn't a good steward in my finances because I go and pay my tithes and only have $53. And I remember it to the T to feed my kids. Now, how is that being a good steward? If I'm struggling, I can't feed my kids because I'm doing other things with the money. That's not a good steward. So my humble beginnings really come from me really thinking and Instead of treating my business, I'm emotional. Instead of treating my business, like I say in here, like an ATM, I said, in order to act upon my passion, I knew I had to learn how to oversee my money. As a nonprofit business, dreams grew into reality. I started making more money than I ever had before. Then I hit rock bottom. I was treating my business like my own personal ATM. And that's what you see. And that's what you see when people get money, like, you know, ball players and all of that. They're like, oh, my God, it's true. And I know we'd be sitting there like, how they do that? But it's true. If you don't have no guidance, you act like a whole fool. And let me tell you, I don't even know what I did. I don't know. I know I went to New York and we did this and and, and, and hotels and no substance. So for about two years, I was acting real stupid. No substance. I wasn't even investing at the time. I didn't have any other real estate other than the real estate that I had, which is the one home. It was stupid. 
It was stupid. And when you see, you're like, oh my gosh, I got this. I'm so humble. And I'm so grateful because I wouldn't be able to bless my staff if the vessel wasn't pure, if the vessel wasn't humble, if the vessel wasn't clean, because I wouldn't have anything. I would have been bankrupt. This Christmas, I was able to write them a check for their rent for the month of December or their mortgage. Now, those that were married, I paid their portion. But I wouldn't have been able to do that. Write a $1,000 check or a $1,500 check to my staff each. The vessel had to be clean. And if I was, I wouldn't have been able to do that when I first started because I didn't have nothing left over. I wouldn't be able to have a retirement plan for that business if it wasn't for the vessel. And, and just, you know, me just being grateful and me being humble. And I, the gratitude that I have is all in this book, A Whipping That Says. So in the beginning of the book, I go into details. I want to first start off and let you get to know Stanel, to know who I am before I go into explaining the house because I get into the house and I get into how, what, deep. You're not going to have and you shouldn't have any unanswered questions. And if you do have any unanswered questions after reading my book, then that's where you can go to Contact at StanettaMoneyTherapist.com and you can email me. My Instagram, you can message me at Stanetta Money Therapist. Facebook, same thing, at Stanetta Money Therapist. And I will be able to answer your question if I can. But I wanted to make sure that you understood who I was. Because who I was was I was broke, but I was a business owner. I was broke. But I was over here sitting up in all these in these meetings. At the time, if I was netting 20 at that time, if I was netting 20, meaning that the, all everything was paid, all the, the payroll was paid, if I was netting 20, if I was, and I think at the time I wasn't even netting 20, I probably was netting 10. That was a lot. What? I got $10,000 at the end of the month. <laughs> what? Broke his head. Broke his head. And a lot of times we see people driving around in these cars broke as hell. And they're driving around in these particular cars, living in these households, and they're either house poor, they're car poor, they don't have investments because they're paying someone else. And I'm going to tell you, anytime you pay someone else, you're being pimped. Because I'm being pimped. I'm being pimped from the mortgage, from living in my dream home. I'm being pimped and I'm tired of being pimped because I don't like paying. I don't like paying bills. Like I know we have to pay bills, but I don't like it. We are all in control of our own lives. And the way I see it, when it comes to money, it depends on you. For me and my household, we're not going to have a mortgage because we're not going to be pimped. And I don't teach my children that. I just don't like it. I don't like every 30 days I got to pay somebody. I like as a landlord, every 30 days I get paid. And I'm not a landlord right now because I sold everything in New Jersey. And now I'm starting over in Florida and other states as well. Because I just, I don't like that. And then once you figure out what you like and what you don't like, then it will be easier for you to understand what it is your end game and where you want to be. Because at my age, at 47, I know my end game at 50. Like what, what, what I want at 50. Like my, my ages, they have goals that are attached to them. And if you don't have a goal attached to your age, then you're just living. And you're just watching people on YouTube. And you just listen to people on podcasts. And you just watch an Instagram. But you're just living. And what are you doing? Why are we playing? I wanted to make sure that with this second, this chapter, that you understood that my humble beginnings and how I was really stupid and how I was really, really stupid with money. And once you understand me and I pour my heart in this chapter, then you'll be able to understand why I did what I did. I want you to understand 
why I titled this book Whipping That Sass. Because I really wanted you to feel how I wanted to up that debt. I was done. I can't do it. I hate that, y'all. I hate it. And until you get to where you hate it, you're going to keep accruing it. Don't think that you have to have a credit card. Don't think you have to have a card note. But I teach you all in this book of Whipping That Sass. I just want you to be able to truly understand where I was and where I am and everything that I did to get there. That's my goals. You're going to learn that too.